Joining us at this point is Ambassador Ashok Sajjanar, former diplomat. We also have Feroz Bakhtemer, the educationist, joining us live. Also with us is Major Mohammad Ali Shah, MPA media panelist. Let me quickly now also go across to uh, uh, Major Mohammad Ali Shah, who is also with us at this point. Major Mohammad Ali Shah, uh, clearly, of course, uh, you know, we are seeing how uh, this, this decision is being hailed by uh, Muslims in India too. Uh, uh, how are you viewing? this decision and do you believe that uh, this will silence the critics, this will silence the skeptics, this will silence the protesters of, uh, uh, you know, uh, those who oppose the loudspeaker in India or do you believe uh, India should not be compared to Saudi Arabia? I totally agree with my co-panelists over here, Ambassador Sajun Har and uh, uh, Mr. Firoz Bakhti Ahmed and I think they spoke a lot of sense, I totally agree with them. And I think, see, religion is a very personal, a very private matter. It's between you and your maker and nobody else. And uh, no one uh, stops you from perform, uh, performing your religious prayer or, 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 or practicing religion, provided it doesn't disturb anyone. I'll give you a small example over here, over there, a small uh, incident that just happened two days back. I booked an Ola. Uh, a cab, basically. I, not, I don't know Ola, Ola Uber or whichever, but I booked a cab. Now, the driver happened to be a Muslim and as I boarded the cab, he was playing loud music in the... It wasn't music actually. He was playing something very, very loud, a religious sermon in the vehicle, in the moving vehicle. And I don't know what it was. And But whatever it was, it was something connected with God. I know this much something you can make out, right? Uh, different between a bhajan or something, something religious. Very loud. Irrespective whether it was godly, it was a kawali, it was a... Irrespective of that, it was disturbing me. It could have been a Bollywood song. It could have been anything. It was disturbing me. So I asked him, Bhaiya, thoda, just tune down your volume, please just close it down because I was getting a call at the same time. So the moment he heard that, he said, Are, ye to khuda ka gana hai. Lahore wala khuda. So he, he, he read my name, right? When I booked Muhammad Ali Shah. Oh, he's a Muslim. So I'm sure he would not mind playing a religious uh, song in the car. It disturbed me being a Muslim. I can well imagine if Ambassador Sajjan Har would have been, or Uday, if you would have been going in the cab, I can well imagine your plight. I mean, being a Muslim, it disturbed me. So the moment and loudspeakers, let me tell you when the religion came about, there were no loudspeakers there that time there. I mean, from any side, I mean, there was no religion. Even during Hazrat Omar's time, 1400 back, years back, there were no loudspeakers. It was only invented much later on in 1898. By that time, the in fact, it was, a, it was called the first experimental moving coil, which was invented by Oliver Lodge in 1898. The first practical moving coil loudspeakers were manufactured by Danish engineer Peter L. Jensen and Edward Triddle in 1950 in Nepa in California. Thereafter, the dynamic speakers were invented in 1925 by Edward W. Kellogg and Chesler W. Rice. Now, this is that time. Don't tell me the religion came after that. People who advocate loudspeakers, religion was there existing much before. And during Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, there were no loudspeakers at that time. During uh, Khalif, during uh, Hazrat Umar's time, there were no loudspeakers. Though, I mean, a uh, lot of uh, things came about that time, like triple talaq came only during uh, Hazrat Umar's time. There was, was, there was no mention of it in the Quran Sharif. There was no, was no mention of it that time. So, religion is a very... And country like Saudi Arabia, I think they are very... They are proud Islamists. And unlike countries like Pakistan or our Taliban, so they what the call they have taken. Okay, let me tell you, my father was the defense attaché to Saudi Arabia. He was the uh, Indian defense attaché to Saudi Arabia for three and a half years. So we have performed. We have happened to have the, had the good fortune of performing the pilgrimage of Hajj and doing uh, Umrahs uh, uh, several times. So we know the holy mosque of Mecca and Medina. I can well relate to it. So when these ten uh, dictates, these these ten. Uh, Things that points have been given by King Salman. I think it makes a lot of sense. One is there will be no collection of funds because many times you collect funds and there is no check where those funds are actually going, how they are being utilized. Secondly, you will not break fast. You will not do your iftari inside the mosque. They are designated places they have given. There is no restriction on that. They would be so... His points, I think they make sense and people who are opposing it, let me tell them one thing, they don't understand. The problem is they don't understand what Islam is or forget about Islam. Many people do not understand their own religion, but they think they know it all. And the trouble arises there because the, the understanding and the knowledge, it is not in debt by a lot of people. They feel that, okay, 
हमें इतना आता है बहुत है वी नो इट ऑल बट नो सो आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी वेरी वेलकम स्टेप इट विल ब्रिंग रिफॉर्म्स एंड इट्स अबाउट टाइम द रिफॉर्म्स हैव टू बी इन 1829 Social reform of the great reformer Raja Ram Mohan Roy. He brought in the reform of abolishing sati. Untouchability was again a, a, a reform in India in fifth, 1950s. We'll discuss finally 1955. It was actually totally abolished completely. Female fair fee to say in 1994. It took us a long time to bring the reform again. It was completely illegal. Completely, I mean, strict punishment. Similarly, triple talaq. In 2017, it was uh, discussed in the in the in the Supreme Court. In 2019, it was brought out the ruling by the Parliament as well. By 1st August 2019, in fact, uh, it was a punishment offence by three years for any husband who indulges in triple talaq. There are different types of triple talaq. There's a different thing. This talaq, bidda, this talaq, hasan, this. There are different types. Instant talaq, irrevocable talaq. Similarly, I would say it's about time for reform. And we speak on loudspeakers. I think it's a very very welcome step. And uh, when we use loudspeakers over there, and the other community says, "Okay, they're using loudspeakers. I will also do this. I will also do Hanuman Chalisa louder than them." Then it becomes a competition. It's no more a faith. It's no more a, a religious faith. And God would be very unhappy. I wish we all follow uh, what God actually wants us to do, which is actually follow humanity. Which is every religion says, "Be a good human being first. But I don't understand. How to how how you can be a good person, a very holy person, when you are not a good human being? Yes, uh, uh, I would uh, conclude by and, saying. And this is steadily happening, uh, you know, in 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 the holy month of Ramadan. This debate has uh, the perfect, uh, perfectly balanced conglomerate of experience in the form of Ashok Sajnar Saab and Major Ali. You know, both are very. Uh, bright and brilliant when they uh, in fact discussed uh, these points and rightly said by major ali that this is something between human and god okay. let me take that to uh, major shah major shah do you, do you, do you agree with that point uh, before, before we take a break uh, do you agree with the the fact that this is going to lead to many following this now those skeptics those opposers those protesters earlier will now fall in line is firoz bakht ahmed's assessment do you, do you also agree um, What about the politicians, political parties? Will they take a cue from this, or is that unlikely? Well, I'll just come to it. You know, I totally agree with what Mr. Firoz Bakht Ahmed has spoken and which uh, what a master has said. Now, has spoken. They've spoken a lot of sense. In fact, I totally agree with them. And what about the political parties? Very interesting question. Well, political parties, उनका तो काम ही है ना. They their work is that. So they but they will not get any support from the Aam Janta from yes. the Awam. Let me tell you one more thing over there. Now, being a Muslim in my country. I have never felt discrimination. Rather, I have faced affirmative action. Okay. No one ever stopped me from from performing a prayer or fasting. In fact, they have been rather supportive. They have been very welcoming. In fact, my buddies in the army who used to always help me, Nagesh and other people and Mahesh and everyone, they were all with me. They were all. In fact, I was always greeted by Ram Ram Sab, Eid Mubarak. So that is the way I used to be greeted upon. And you know, I led the Mandir Parade because we are very secure, not secure. Uh, and secular, not only in the armed forces but everywhere as human beings. So I feel the society will not change unless and until we change our own selves. We have to do a self introspection first. We have to realize and see how. And being a Muslim, if I do not respect the other community, I don't. I can't expect the other community to respect me back. Only. So you believe I, by by loudspeakers it shows disrespect. I believe it's it, it creates disturbance. If it's disturbing somebody, it's not disrespect. It's disturbance. As I give you the analogy of me in the cab. Okay. It was disturbance to me. Yes. How music going on? Yes. It could Hollywood all I care, but it was disturbing me. So I yes. said, please turn the music off. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, that that is an important point that you've raised, and I'll, I'll let that be the last word. My thanks to all of our guests for joining us on this discussion. It's.